Okay, who was here last week? Show of hands, wonderful. Yes, well, you would have known last week I launched our Reach 24. Uh, Reach is our 10-year plan uh, because we are responding to God's call to extend our reach to reach the lost. And how are we going to do that, I hear you ask? By what? Creating? Well done, there you go. Creating spaces and places for people to count Jesus. Why? Because it's all about Jesus. Uh, we're not here to manufacture an experience for anybody. We're here to introduce them to the living Christ. Um, because as Jesus says himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am. It's not that you, you, know, you go to a good guy called Jesus who's got some good teachings and shows you the way. No, Jesus is the way. And he goes on to say, no one comes to the Father except through the Son. And so our job is to introduce people to Jesus. And as, as Heather mentioned earlier, and as we looked at the Great Commission last week, we are called to make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. That is the mission, the global mission of the church, and that is what we are engaged in. And uh, last week, as we looked at this year's plans, and I did a recap for um, the previous uh, couple of years, all that we've done with creating new spaces and places, I announced um, that we will be creating and launching new sites, new places this year. And uh, we have the wonderful Peter Young last week uh, talk about Verso Central as we look to launch a site right in St. Albans City. Uh, um, it's going to be a open weekly, a cafe, a bookshop, a florist, a place where people can meet, a place where you can run alpha, there'll be worship events, and then eventually uh, run in services there on a Sunday. Really exciting. We also looked last week at uh, a church plant that we are planting this year, and we had Ian and Lucy Harvey with us talking about their journey as God has called them to plant a church in France, uh, in central France. So that is really exciting. And if you've missed that, you can catch up on our YouTube channel uh, to watch those announcements. Well, as I said last week, we are actually launching uh, three new sites this year. One of those is Verso uh, Central. And so this week and next week, I want to uh, announce to you and I want us to look at what else is God is doing in us and through us as a people. And lastly, it's worth reminding us all here that um, everyone gets to play. My job here is, is to equip you all for the work of the ministry that God's laid on your heart. Wherever you are, whether you're work or at play, your spheres of influence, we are all called to be ministers of God's grace. And so my job is to open the gates and let you run. I looked at Isabel Allam's prophecy last week, reminded us of what she gave in 2019, that there are shepherds in this house, there are racehorses in this house that are ready to run. And so with that, I want us just to transition to talk about what we are going to be doing this year in terms of another new place. And in order to do that, I'd like to welcome to the stage the wonderful James and Catherine Barringer. Can you please give them a hand as they come up? Wonderful. Do come up, guys. Here we go. So good having you here. Now, many will recognize you, but equally many won't. So it would be great if you can just tell us a bit who you are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, I'm James, and this is Catherine. Just in case you yes, we've got some people on the side here, so we're going to have to... Uh, um, oh, okay, that's fine, that's fine. So um, uh, we have three kids uh, between the ages of 13 and 7, so we're just entering the teenage years. Wow, joys of joys. They're fabulous. Yes. Um, we're both teachers and um, we've been in Hamill now for 13, 14 years? Nearly 14 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we actually met here um, at St Albans Vineyard, as it wow. was called back then. It was um, actually a bouncy castle just over here. It was like there was a bouncy really? castle, yeah. It was she a... actually went down with me. I had no idea she came down with me. We've had a lot of arguments about <laughs> Doesn't that. Doesn't remember so. me at all. Uh, no, <laughs> we had, But then it. later on, we met through mutual friends, um, and uh, we got to know each other. James then went to Tanzania for a year um, to teach in a missionary school, and we talked on Skype, and uh, then... Um, we talked for hours and hours and hours and then he came back and we got engaged and we got married here on a little platform about there wow. um, and uh, we had our first child and he was dedicated here um, 
But about, yeah, that's fair. So I'll yeah. let you ask the next question. So no, that's us, really. But <laughs> we, we both still work as teachers. James has worked as a teacher for the whole of the last um, 14 years that we've been in Hemel, and I have gone back to teaching in the last couple of years. Amazing. Now, I mean, talking about this building, it's part of your history, so much rooted in your history. But the last time you were on this stage was about 11 years ago. What happened then? For those of us, for those of you who weren't here 11 years ago. Is that you? No, I think it's you. Okay. We did try and write this down last, <laughs> right, in the last couple of days. It's like, it's, it's like we're so used to ad-libbing, but actually we felt like we had to write a script. So it was like, but then you get up and it's like, oh no, is it you or... <laughs> um, so, uh, almost 11 years ago, um, we were up on this stage with Chris and Fliss Lane and uh, some other leaders from the vineyard as well. And uh, we were prayed for and sent out to uh, be the Hemel Hempstead Vineyard. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So, you were planted out 11 years yeah. ago. And you planted Hemel Vineyard. We've got some Hemel Vineyard people here. Why don't we give these guys a hand? Hi, okay. <laughs> So good seeing you guys here. So what has the journey been like over the past 11 years? Give, give us a flavour of what that journey has been like for you guys. Well, when we, when we first started, we, uh, we did an alpha course. Uh, we started gathering people. But I think one of my favourite memories, actually, was hiring out uh, Sapphire Gymnastics. Mm. And we were just thinking outside the box, and we had, we had a young family at the time. And uh, we let the kids play around, and me and Dad, because... You know, around the gymnastic hall. And then, and then we, we gathered quite a few families. Many of them didn't know Jesus at all. And then we'd have a little party at the end. And we sat down in another room. And they'd sit down in a circle and have a bit of a snack. And then Catherine would do a little talk on um, one, a Bible verse or something. And then I'd sing Great Big God. It was, it, was a, it was a Bible story where we all sat on the floor and pretended yeah. to be the fishermen throwing the nets That's and right. and stuff like that. It was amazing. It was really, really fun. And we advertised that in a local uh, free magazine that went yeah. to families. And we must have had hundreds wow. of families come through in those years that we did it. Um, come through, you know, get the blessing of a, a play session, but also get to sing Great Big God. And uh, years ago, Vineyard used to sell these big boxes of Great Big God DVDs. And we bought loads and loads and loads of them. And everybody who came, we just gave one out. Wow. And it was such a blessing just to be there in, in that community. Mm. And, you know, we were gathering families because that's what we were. And... Um, yeah, God really blessed that. It was a really, really special time. And at the same time, Catherine had, just before we started, we planned out, Catherine had, had this idea, felt that God was calling us to do a, uh, like a, a children's bank. And so we started a thing called uh, Children's Storehouse, which is run at the moment by the amazing Meg Cripps. Big shout out there. to Meg. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, uh, and that's been going now as well. So, and, and that was a real opportunity for us to love the poor. That was one of our hearts of Hemel, was the fact that we would be in the community, but we would be a church, A, that was missed, but also that was loving the poor in our community? Yeah, I think um, the, the heart that we went with really was um, that we love the vineyard and it's our family and we felt that it was vineyard is our, is our home and we just love being part of this family and so blessed by it. But we also had felt through a sort of process of discernment um, that we should move to Hemel and actually... Soon after we got married, we started praying, Lord, where do you want us to go? We can go anywhere. We were both teaching. We were living um, in a rented accommodation, and we were like, you can send us anywhere, Lord. You can send us anywhere in the world. And um, we sort of pushed a few doors in different places. Um, and then we felt that Hemel Hempstead um, was the place that we should go. And um, I didn't like it to start with. <laughs> I was like, oh, do I really have to go and live there? And I remember praying out loud um, one day as we were driving around, Lord, if you want me to live here, you're going to have to change my heart. And about two weeks later, we were driving around again. And, um, and I heard myself say out loud, oh, it's so lovely. There's all these green areas. So, like, there's green parks and things everywhere. And then I heard myself, and I looked at James, and I was like, oh, look what God just did. Wow. Um, and it's really beautiful. But we, we just wanted to be the church on the ground where we lived. And, but we love the vineyard, and so, um, you know, we felt the call to, to be the vineyard there. And I remember saying to Chris and Fliss at one point, I just, we feel like we need to stick a flag in the sand and say, we're here. Um, the actually, vineyard was, is I, here. The, when we went to come and speak to Chris and Fliss, I actually was up at the top in the corner. And, just, and there was a moment where I just felt, just took myself away and just felt you to say, you need to, need to take what they ask. Mm. And then as we were, we've been praying about this anyway. And as a result of that, that's, that's how it grew out of out that. Yeah. 
Um, and I think that's been a real blessing, has been to be doing church where we live. And, yeah. um, you know, we've had the huge blessing of some of our neighbours um, come, start coming to church and um, just wanting Jesus. And that's really exciting. And friends, um, like all the way back from years and years and years ago, I think even before we actually started the church, um, a very, very precious friend um, who that I lost contact with. And then she, the last couple of years, she's come back. She's come back to the church and come back to the Lord and um, just been really blessed by that. And God has been really gracious um, We've got really good at doing family services, all age worship and interactive and having a lot of fun. Um, and we've just known God's presence um, so sweetly in our worship and our times together. And um, you can't ask for more than that, really. Wow, that is just beautiful. And you know what I love about these guys, just as they're sharing, just their heart of obedience to the Lord and giving, them, giving the Lord their yes. And that's a theme that you'll hear throughout Reach, which is just men and women saying, Yes, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. One of those dangerous prayers that we get to pray. I just love the obedience you showed. And I love how you kind of how the Lord just worked in your heart in that story. It's just so wonderful. So that was 11 years ago. What a journey it's been. So what's next? Why are we here? Why are we having this conversation? What's happening? So, we, so as we said, we, we've got a uh, growing teenage family. And uh, our house is a bit small. So we, were, we needed to move. And, and we've been trying over the last couple of years to, to do that, and just, it just fell through. Um, and then we'd, been, uh, we've, we'd got in touch with Mission Housing, and, and we, uh, basically the journey was to... to it's, a, it's a shared ownership yeah, that's project. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Just to clarify. <laughs> now, now, now the relationship is starting to show. I think we need to get a bouncy cast in the corner for you guys. Just to, uh, you know, revitalize. <laughs> <laughs> and and as, we, as, we, as we looked in that, we were praying through staying and, and um, engaging and seeking what God had for us next. Do you want to jump into that? Yeah, so um, it sounds really odd, but we have lived in the same house for nearly 14 years. We started with James and I, and now there are five of us. And this had just become a real stress point for us. And so we applied to Mission Housing for the shared ownership because we were like, Lord, you know, give us the next home that works for us as a family and for us to keep leading the church. Um, and as we went through that process, we were just seeking the Lord, you know, so much. Um, just like we had when, before we started, really. It yeah. was just an opportunity to do a stop point and go, geez, what are you actually calling to us to at the moment? Yeah, it just felt like a real moment in time. And as we prayed and we were seeking the next home to stay, actually what we sensed the Lord say to our surprise was, it's time to step down. And it was a surprise because actually when we started the mm. church, we were expecting to do this. Forever. Forever, moving forward. So mm. actually for, for us to get a, a, a stop point and for Jesus to say, hold a minute, I, I need you to listen to what I'm wanting to say to you. And in, as well in that, I'd started a coach, I started to be involved in um, executive coaching through my school. And, and so that was starting to bring out a strength in me that, that Jesus was calling me to as well. Mm. So we were quite surprised and we went through a time of... Um, just taking really wise counsel from people who've known us a long time and our area leaders in the vineyard and um, just really praying again and seeking the Lord. And, um, but we just came to a point where we just had a real sense of peace about the fact that God was saying um, it's time to step down from leading the church and that he's going to lead us into something new. Wow. Uh, you know what? Just the way you guys just always are seeking the Lord on that. And just love that you, what you said, James, that kind of stop point, just reassess, say, Lord, is this still what you've got for us in the next season? And, you know, God works in seasons, doesn't he? Mm, and I think discerning the seasons and the times, as Jesus says, is yeah. just so crucial. So, so you, you got to that point. What did you do next? Um, so once we had gone through that time of, you know, really praying over the decision and asking, you know, people for their, you know, their prayers and their thoughts as well, um, we took that to our trustees. Um, who've been so gracious and have just been so incredibly supportive. Um, Luca, I don't know if you're here today, you're one of them, and John, um, we're so grateful to you for your very wise counsel over the years. Um, and they were so good with us and they, uh, you know, honoured that and, um, and said, okay, let's, let's look at moving forward. So we scheduled another meeting in a couple of weeks um, to kind of look at then the practicalities of what that would mean because at that time what we felt was it was likely that the church would close um, just because of the situation that we were in. Um, and then James. So, that, so as we got to that point, we decided that we were going to step down. 
And then I had this real sense of where I needed to come and speak to Mark. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the number of times where I get a burning sense like there's, uh, there's something going on here. I don't know what it is, but I need to come and speak to them. So I came and landed in Mark. We had a nice little coffee and chat. And I said, by the way, <laughs> this, is where I'm, this is where we're at. And, um, and I sensed the potential of maybe having a site. And, um, and so I kind of gave that to Mark and, and asked him to go and pray and, and seek whether or not that's what Jesus wanted to do. Exactly. It was a great time and wonderful to, to kind of just speak and to pray. And, you know, on the back of that, we certainly had the sense that it was an opportunity for us, not for uh, Vineyard Hemel to finish, but for the work to continue the work that you've started and faithfully sowed into in a very different way. And so we're really excited to announce that we'll be launching Verso Hemel in September, which is really exciting. I, love, I have to say, I, I love the fact that, that it, there's a transition here. I just, I just can't tell you how much that means, that actually we, we've, Jesus has given us something that we've tended and looked after and then he's, he's called us to give it back to the family. Yeah. And then the family's going to take up again. And yeah. it's just like, it's so, I was absolutely blown away after our conversation about Jesus had already planned this all together. Yeah, yeah absolutely. This is just so exciting. And I just want to honour you guys. Uh, you know, for 11 years, you have faithfully sown into Hemel. And you've seen the fruit there. But there's way more fruit to come. Yes, there and, is. you know, it, the work's going to continue and you've built deep foundations. And the thing about building deep foundations is that you build really tall buildings. And that's what's been building and what is coming. And I think it's really appropriate at this time. Can we all stand and can we just honour James and Catherine? Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I love this. Look, we're in a moment, we're going to get you guys up, and we would love to pray with you and pray for you as uh, you transition into this new season. Um, but before we do that, wouldn't it be a nice idea to invite to the stage our new Versa so, Hill so site we had, We've got a couple in our church, and we'd... Um, who, who have, been, have been absolutely amazing. They are incredible people, really passionate about Jesus, and have served their hearts out in Hemel. And they have such a passion for Hemel, and they love Vineyard. And um, I would like to introduce you to Pritam and Terza. Yeah! Hello. Coming up, guys. Wonderful. So good to have you guys here. I've had the Thanks benefit so of spending a few days with these guys at the Vineyard Leadership Conference, and it's just been such a real privilege and blessing to spend time with you. Um, but of course, for, for many of you, uh, most of you, I would suspect, you are fresh faces. And so, Very nice way of putting it. Well, Thank there you. you go. I'd like to add a compliment Thank there you. in the question. No, <laughs> absolute pleasure. Why don't you tell everybody your names and a bit about who you are? Yeah, so um, most people call us Prit and Tea. Um, we actually, so I'm Prit, this is T. We actually have, um, we have a couple name. You know, like all the good couples, like Brangelina, Jedwood. It's not really a couple. Anyway. Um, we're, um, the best couple, So yeah. if you want to remember our names, um, Pretty. I love that. Pretty. That is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty. Which we think is quite fitting. I think, I think that yeah. you guys certainly are pretty. So, yeah. It's really compliments. All the compliments, yeah, it's we, great. We love you here. This is so great. You're so um, welcome. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we have we've got married about three years ago. Um, we live in Hemel Old Town. Um, Church-wise, I've been with Hemel Vineyard for nine of those 11 years. Amazing. Um, and I've been at a lot of vineyards in my time. Um, I was at Central Vineyard for a while um, in Northampton, where I went to uni. Um, and Trent Vineyard for a while as well um, in my hometown of Nottingham. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> Any Nottinghams. <laughs> um, and I also did the discipleship year at Trent Vineyard um, in 2019, which was amazing. 
And when we got married, we um, yeah, really felt called to Hamel Hempstead, where we live. Yeah, absolutely love that. So here we are. We're on this stage. What, what was the journey like for you guys? Like how, what, talk us through what happened and how we got to the point we got to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, what a journey. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been quite the, the last few months, I'd say, for us. Um, on, do you know what? On the surface, it, it, it almost feels like this has kind of happened quite quickly. But as we reflect, it's really clear that, for us anyway, it's really clear that God's been in this for a long time. Yeah. Um, uh, so a couple of kind of points on that journey. I'd say eight, eight years ago, um, the wonderful James and Catherine sent me off to uh, my first vineyard like event, um, and it was the worship retreat. Yeah. And there I had this really clear, incredible picture or kind of vision from God. Um, and part of that was that Jesus, he, he showed me this town, um, and it was kind of in construction. It had a really tall building. It's funny you just said that. Mm. It had a really tall building. Um, and he kind of showed me, like I say, in, in, in construction. And he said, you know, this is my town, and I want you to go and build it. Wow. Um, and I, I felt so strongly that he was talking about Hemel Hempstead. And for those that don't know, one of the kind of key landmarks in Hemel Hempstead is a really tall building. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, and, and actually, um, a couple of weeks after that, I remember finding out what the word Hemel means. So I don't know if anyone in here speaks Dutch or Afrikaans, but Hemel in, in Dutch and Afrikaans, here we go, means, means heaven. Wow. Um, and, you know, I was just blown away. You know, God, God, is, God is building his kingdom in Hemel Hempstead, and he's invited us to be part of that, and it's such a privilege and an honour. And, and man, our, our hearts are on fire for that. But that was eight years ago. Yeah, and as we look back over the last year, we've kind of realised that God's really put um, the language and vision of Verso on our hearts. Um, for example, last year we wrote a song in Connect Group um, just spontaneously during worship, um, and it only has four lines, uh, but the first line ends in the word place, and the second line ends in the word space. Very cool. Familiar. Has anyone, has anyone heard yep. those words before? I, think, I, I hope they have. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so, and also we started a monthly worship evening last September um, with a vision just to create a space for people to encounter Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Um, and also when James and Catherine first told us that they were stepping down, um, God really put the idea of, before we knew anything about anything, basically, <laughs> um, God put the idea of a Versa Hemel um, site on our hearts. So yeah, fast forward a few months and here we are. <laughs> wow. I love how God works. Just that story of eight years ago and just weaving in. It's wonderful. And Prit, you're, you're a worship leader as well, which is wonderful. Um, and the, the worship nights, you guys did one on Friday night in Hamel? Yeah. Really? Just, yeah, just that one. Come, anyone, if anyone's ever free, uh, the last Friday of the month. We're going off script. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the last, Shock the horror. Last. <laughs> Um, this is seamless. The last, <laughs> the last Friday of the month, um, we meet at St Mary's Hall in, in Old Town. It's yeah. convenient for us. So. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> so, so what's your vision for Verso Hemel? What do you feel the Lord's calling you guys to? And what does it look like for us to be in Hemel? Yeah, so we'll, we'll, I mean, we've, there's so much to unpack. Um, we'll, we'll kind of give you a bit of a taste in a moment. I'll let Steve talk through some of the specifics um, on the script. Um, <laughs> uh, seamless. Um, yeah, but just to kind of frame all of that, um, like, like we mentioned, you know, we, we had the privilege of hanging out with you guys at the Vineyard Leaders Gathering this week. And you know when you're, you, you know, when you're, you know when you're at something and you feel like every word that's spoken is straight from God's heart to yours, right? You ever had that? And it just felt like that. And every word was all about, you know, obedience and just pursuing his presence. And, you know, that being the most important thing, just fixating your eyes on Jesus and pursuing what he's doing. Um, in fact, we sang a song there that you're pretty sick of now because I he just plays play it. it all the time. I play, it, I play it in the car. Oh, I play it, uh, constant. You know, um, and, it, and the bridge goes, it says, um, you know, we've prayed our prayers. Yeah. We've made our plans. Come on. It's a good song, but <laughs> <laughs> you feel me, you feel me. <laughs> We've prayed our friends, we've made our plans, but if you're not in it, yeah. we don't want it. Yeah. Oh God, would you move? Amen. And in a nutshell, right, that's it. That's the vision. 
is, you know, we've got all these dreams, all these aspirations, but we just want to pursue him. We just want to do what mm. he's doing. And we want to be a community of people that do that, right? That, that pursue what <clears throat> Jesus is doing, that find his presence, and we, and we get involved, right? Wherever Amen. that is, whenever that is. Whether that's Tesco, Audi, yeah. you know, we're, we're there. That's, that's the vision. Yeah, Love yeah, that. definitely. And um, as Fritt was saying about uh, Hemel, Hemel Hempstead, meaning um, heaven's home, uh, which is just amazing. And we really want to um, really feel that for Hemel Hempstead. And we want to see that become a reality. And we're just so desperate for, for Hemel to be known as a place of joy, mm. peace, love and generosity. And um, so quickly, just to list a few of the things that God's um, really laid on our hearts um, is to create safe spaces for people going through um, different things such as bereavement, loneliness, um, people struggling with their mental health, and just to share their journey and just know that they're not alone. Um, also a space for the people who are supporting or caring for a friend, family member, or a partner um, going through mental health struggles, because that's not an easy place to be in either, and it can be really isolating. Um, but also, ultimately, for those people, we just want to point them towards Jesus. Amen. Yeah. That is just so exciting. It's just so wonderful. I mean, hell uh, is round the corner. In fact, I've, we've got a map on the screen. Let's put that up. This map that you're going to see coming up is a map of Hemel, and you'll see a lot of red dots here. Um, the, the, this is where all of you guys live, essentially. I don't know specifically. You're okay. I'm not going to be knocking on all your doors this afternoon. But just in this area, we have about 2,000, over 2,000, 2,300 in, in church suite. Um, Hemel is where it's circled. There is over 80 people already living in Hemel. Many of you uh, travel from Hemel and obviously the surrounding areas. I mean, look, there's loads around the area. And um, I want to just say this. For some of you, I believe that you've heard stories about these men and women saying yes to Jesus, understanding the times and the seasons and that, that you might be moving into a new season where God is calling you to make Jesus known where you live in your neighbourhood. And I want to just encourage you right now as you, as you are here this morning, as you're online, if you're in that area, can I ask you to do this? Can you pray and say, Lord, are you calling me to my hometown to make Christ known there and be part of Verso Hemel? Because I think this is an amazing opportunity for us to send out a team and to make Christ known uh, to, to the Hemel area. It's really exciting. Um, Guys, you've given us a flavour of what's happening, but what, what do we do next? Because I suspect there might be people here uh, that want to find out more. Is there an opportunity to do so? And if so, what does that look like? Yeah, um, so, funny you Is should say that, Is by magic? Right? Yeah. Funny I should say that. <laughs> yeah. um, it's almost like we planned this. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess the next touch point, um, or the next date to put in your diary, everyone, everyone <laughs> is, uh, is the 17th, or is Friday the 17th of May. Yeah. Um, we are, look at that, wow. Oh, no. <laughs> what a lovely picture. <laughs> I love that. No, it's wonderful. <laughs> I remember taking that one, that's great. Um, yeah, so uh, 8 till 9.30 uh, on Friday evening. We're, we're just going to have a bit of an information evening, so we're going to just talk a bit about... Um, I, we said there's loads to unpack, and this is going to be an opportunity and a space and a place to do that. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, come along, put it in your diary and please do come along. Come with questions. Um, yeah, we'd love to journey that with you. I guess I, I, beyond that, um, obviously, as you say, please pray for us. Please, that's, that's probably the, the big next step as well. Please pray. Um, uh, but, but also, um, and I guess paired with that, uh, the real next step is, is finding a team. Yep. So um, we're, we're a bit like Nick Fury at the moment, for those of you who are <laughs> Avengers fans, and we're, we're looking out for some heroes to come and be part of our, we won't call ourselves the Avengers, but we'll, be the, we'll just say the dream team. Um, and yeah, ma many of you in the room or online, you know, many, God will be calling you. So, so yeah, please lean into that. Um, because so there's gonna be, he's going to do some amazing things in Hemel. Yeah. He really is. And, it, and what a privilege to be part of that. Yeah, and uh, second thing is um, a venue. So we started putting together a list of potential venues, but um, yeah, we were just we really want to pray into that and um, go on prayer walks and just really listen to where God wants to put us. And thirdly, um, between now and September, we'll be doing some gathering events. Um, so in Hemel to start kind of building a community, meeting people, um, and we're already doing a monthly worship evening, which we spoke about um, last Friday of every month. Um, 
come and talk to us if you want more information for that. And um, yeah, we just hope to do so much more. So do keep an eye out online or um, anywhere. But yeah, basically pray for us is the main thing. (laughs) You know, I've got to say, having spent time with you guys, and obviously prior to last week, you guys kindly invited me around to your house and we had a lovely meal. And just hearing that passion and that heart, these guys are the real deal. And these guys are called by God. And I'm just so excited for you and the team that God's building. Uh, And an opportunity for us to continue the amazing work of James and Catherine and the church there uh, in in Hemel. But to continue that mission to make Christ known in this way. And uh, it really, really is exciting. Uh, What I'd like to do now is... Let's invite James and Catherine back. I'd like us to pray for them, and then we're going to pray for you. So why don't you guys come and join us back on the stage. I'm going to invite um, Steph and Trevor, actually. Can you guys come up as well as we just pray for these guys? Church, let's stand. We're going to pray. I'm going to grab these mics off you. Um, actually, I'll give you this. Right, you guys, we're praying for you first. Yes, that's how, that's how this is going to work. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, let's pray for you guys. Thank you, Jesus. You know, James and Catherine, when when I heard you just talking, God gave me this sort of picture, which I get quite often actually, of how he paints a tapestry of our lives and his kingdom. And um, you have been such an amazing part of that tapestry. And your story is not just a story that will just disappear over time, but it will be woven into that beautiful tapestry of his kingdom. And and all the things that you've done, all the people that you have blessed and touched and and made, made changes in their lives, the transformation that you have seen will not be just a bit of history, but it will be woven into this beautiful tapestry of the kingdom of God. Mm. And of course, right through the middle of that tapestry flows a golden thread, and that is the golden thread of our beautiful Lord and Saviour Jesus. And he wants you to know that your story is not over. That tapestry carries on as it gets woven in the years that come for you and the things that he is drawing you into now. And you will take his golden thread with you and touch the lives of many more um, as you just step into the next chapter and season of your life. So I just pray for an amazing blessing on both of you. Well done, my faithful Mm. servants, says your Lord Jesus. Well done. You have sown well. You have set deep roots. You have set a set a foundation on which will be built this beautiful place that is heaven on earth, as mm-hmm. Hemel Hempstead has been described to us this morning. Yeah. And we just ask you, Lord, just bless them yeah. and know that they are well loved by you yes, and that God. this is just a transition into something fresh and new. So bless them with all the great blessings, Lord, as their children grow up Mm. into these teenage years. I pray that you will bring such a wonderful sense of love into their lives, Lord, that as they grow together as a family, they will just shine the love of Jesus wherever they go and whatever they do. Mm. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Interesting, you're praying um, about seed. When I was sort of standing behind listening to Trevor, I I could see the Lord put a seed in your hand all those years ago, and it was a very tiny, delicate seed. It's like a sunflower seed, but it was very tiny. And um, I could see you both diligently planting into a tiny pot, you know, the tiniest of pots that you get when you first get a seed. And just loving and tending to this little seed. And each time it grew, you put it in a bigger pot and a bigger pot. But I could just see you both lovingly um, looking at this plant and attending to it so faithfully. Um, but then I saw a picture of the plant at its capacity. It was in the largest of pots <laughs> and it had grown beautifully. But you both knew it was time for it to be put into the ground. You know, and as a gardener, I know I love watching when I put a plant from a pot into the ground and watching it just grow to its full potential. Um, But, you know, often when you go to a garden centre, you buy one, you forget the work that's been put in before. (laughs) But there's a lot of work that goes into planting a seed and watching it flourish to come into its strength and its own, to be planted into that big ground. So I can just see you both watching over Pritt and Tea as they're planting this pot. You've given to them as a gift, actually. Mm. 
and you've entrusted to them because you, the faithfulness has gone back all the years before. You love this plant. Mm. Um, but the Lord is giving you such an ability to let go, which is so beautiful. But, you know, you're going to watch and see that plant grow mm. into a beautiful tree where many will come and sit under that tree and eat of its fruit and bathe in, in the shade of it as well. And you will be part of that and you will see it. So, Father, I thank you for their diligence. I thank you for their faithfulness to you, that small seed, which now has become so big and needs to be planted into um, a large ground where it can grow and flourish into something new and different. But bless them, Jesus, as they leave this place. Mm. I just pray you'll protect their minds, their bodies and their spirits, Lord. And we thank you for the new seed ahead for them, <laughs> the new planting season ahead. Mm. And it will be successful and fruit will grow because of their faithfulness. So we bless them now in your name, Jesus. We put the blood of Jesus upon your heads and your children's. And we thank you that under your wings, Lord, they will find refuge and protection in all the days of their lives. And we bless them and honor them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, you guys are just given so much of yourselves. Um, and the sacrifice, um, and we we had a bit of a joke around Christmas, and you guys are like our parents. <laughs> um, you're definitely not old enough to be our parents. Yeah. Um, but I just, you know, in all the sacrifice and all you've given us, I just um, almost in this, like in this moment, I just see the like the Holy Spirit just filling you up again, mm. just filling you up. And empowering you and giving you everything you need for this next season. Um, and I just want to, as well, in this moment, just just pray over your children. Mm. Um, Lord, that you would just bless them in double measure for all they've poured out as well. Um, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Just come, Holy Spirit, fill them up. Yeah, and just pray for such excitement in this next period. That, um, yeah, that there won't be any anxiety or worry of what's going to happen, where they're going to go, what they're going to do, <laughs> that you would just give them such excitement and help them to be expectant for the next amazing thing that they're going to do. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We just bless you. We love you. We honor you and your children. for the sacrifice, for the faithfulness, for the pursuit of Christ, we bless you. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would anoint them for this next season, that as you entrust to them new seeds, Lord God, they would feel and see the joy of growth in that. Would they know your love, would they know your comfort? Would they know your peace? Would they know your protection? Would they know your joy? We pray a blessing upon them. Would you protect them, Lord God, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally? And anoint them, we pray, as we bless them in your name. And the whole church gave a resounding yeah. amen. Bless you guys. We're not done yet. More praying. We're going to pray for Prit and T. What do you reckon? Yes. Let's pray for this pretty couple. Sorry, it had to be done. I mean, you invited it, right? <laughs> More Lord, yeah. Let's pray for these guys. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I, um, I had the privilege of get, well, chatting to you a bit when we were at the VLG, um, but I did keep getting drawn to you both. And I do like to watch and see what the Lord's doing. Um, and one of the days we were sitting and um, they both came in with all these treats, <laughs> donuts and sweets and... And I was so taken aback because I, I really fancied some fruit pastels. <laughs> and I'd actually gone to the cafe looking for some fruit pastels. I'd had this craving. 
and I couldn't get any. I was quite disappointed. I got some mints instead, sat down. And anyway, they came over, they were offering these things, and they handed me a packet of fruit pastels. And I was like, wow, Lord, this is not a coincidence, actually. This is the Lord's, the Lord's putting in you both such an ability to see people and what they need. And that's what I took from that moment. I said, yes, Lord, what you're doing in this couple and what they bring is an ability to see into the heart of people and to see what they need in the moment. He's given you such a discernment for that and an ability to love and gather and feed. And that's such a beautiful thing to be hospitable and to feed God's people. I could just see you both giving out fish and bread and the abundance, just as the Lord blessed the bread and the fish. I can see that in both of your hands. The Lord's going to bless what he gives to you and it's going to multiply and feed many. So Father, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus, for the picture of the abundance that you are putting in their hands and just the freedom, the generosity to them for them to give in that way, Lord, to love those that you've put around them. And Father, we just want to pray a blessing upon them, Lord, as they step out into this new season. And Father, we thank you that you're going to bless their hands and their feet, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you'll always continue to remind them, Jesus, to, to love others in that way, because that is their gifting. We thank you for them, Jesus. We thank you for all that they are. And Lord, we look forward to getting to know them better. And we look forward to doing this journey with them, Lord. And we ask that you bless them now with your blood, Jesus. Put a seal upon their heads, Lord God, that they would be hidden in the heavenly realms from the enemy, Lord. That they walk under the protection of your wings and with your mighty angels. In your precious name we ask, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you for this beautiful, pretty couple. Uh, Lord, that you have given them such enthusiasm for your kingdom. That, Lord, there is so much energy in the room when they are there. And I just thank you for that energy. Uh, and Lord, I just re reminded of when uh, David was um, chosen from, by, from all of his brothers, uh, when they were looking for a new king, and they looked for uh, perhaps the obvious cases, the tall, the strong, the with great stature, but actually God had chosen David because of his heart. And I thank you, Lord, that you have chosen this couple because of their hearts. They have a heart for your kingdom, firstly, a heart for you, Lord, but also the heart for those people. Just from what they said this morning, Lord, I thank you that you can see the compassion they have for the people of Hemel and that you have, have made those hearts just beat stronger than ever before. And I pray that you do more of that, Lord. But Lord, I also pray that their roots that are already deep will go deeper in you that, Lord, they will keep their feet firmly in your good soil and that, Lord, they will be watered by the Spirit, Lord, so that they will know the refreshing of your love in their lives. And from that love, they can give out love. So bless them in that as well, Lord. And, Father, where people turn around and say, oh, are these, are these are running a church, this young couple running a church, they may see on the, on the outside a lack of maturity, Lord. But, Father, you see such deep maturity in them already that you, they've already set their roots deep. They've already seen that they are walking a path in your kingdom. And Lord, I pray that you give them the strength and that, that to, to do them, walk that path and that people will actually see by their fruits, they will see the maturity of this couple. And that Lord, as uh, James and Catherine have, uh, have weaved that beautiful tapestry, that that will just continue to be weaved. The story will be continued in Hamel and this couple will be a main part of that, Lord, as your golden thread runs through. So bless them, I pray, both in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Jesus, um, I just thank you so much for these guys and the huge blessing that they are. And we just pray for your increased favour upon them, Jesus. We pray favour upon them um, where they live with all those connections that they're already building and that you will bring people to them, bring the people that you have ready to hear um, your good news and of your love. And I pray that you bring them and just give them such favour. And I just really felt uh, in the scripture, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm. Um, but it was like, it was like God was saying, you need to know that I delight in you and you are my joy before you've done anything. And uh, that you're going to do amazing things. But just may you know that joy every day when you get up of God being so delighted in you. So delighted in you. 
So we just pray that huge joy and that that would carry you through. Amen. Yeah, Jesus, I just thank you so much for them. I just pray for their um, inner journey with you in their quiet times, in the space where they just hang out with you. Lord, I just pray for an increased depth and their authority and their, <clears throat> their words will come out of those moments where they're hanging out with you, that it will be in the secret place that you form them. And we are so proud of them. More of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We look forward to commissioning you guys in September. For now, we pray a blessing upon you both. Lord, we just pray that you would stir your people that are called to partner with this amazing couple to make you known in Hemel. Stir hearts, Lord. Prepare hearts. And Lord, would you bless these guys? You anoint them for the task ahead. I pray for favor. I pray for insight, spirit of discernment and a spirit of wisdom, Lord, upon them. We bless them in your name, in your precious name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Wonderful. Bless you guys.